Climate change remains a hot topic on the political agenda, and efforts to combat irreversible temperature rises will have far-reaching consequences in modern life. Individuals and businesses will have to take steps to help governments achieve net-zero carbon targets. Every industry will have to play its part. This is true for sport and, by extension, tennis. As a result, the game's leaders must carefully consider their role and responsibilities in reducing tennis's impact on the environment and how the changing climate will negatively affect players and supporters alike. The impact of climate change is easier to spot in some parts of the globe than others, particularly in areas that typically experience severe heat or cold. As such, the Australian Open, one of tennis's biggest events, faces significant challenges. Hosted at Melbourne Park, the first Grand Slam of the season takes place in the middle of the Australian summer. It's a huge social event, with 812,000 fans coming through the gates in 2020 to see the world's best players and injects around 300 million Australian dollars into the Victorian economy, with roughly a thousand staff employed. But despite its popularity, temperature rises and changing weather patterns threaten to derail the event. Searing heat is nothing new to those playing down under. Former world number one Andre Agassi once described competing at the Australian Open as playing in a giant kiln. In 2014, Canadian player Frank Dantzovic branded the conditions as inhumane. Heat stress can lead to muscle cramps, profuse sweat, thirst and fatigue. As conditions become more severe, players can suffer heat stroke. As the body runs low on fluids, sweating stops. Players may experience chills and impaired coordination and thinking caused by problems with their nervous system. At its worst, this can be life-threatening. In some ways, managing these problems is nothing new. For example, up until 1972, the Australian Open changed dates and locations within Australia and New Zealand to adapt to different climatic conditions. The tournament, then played on a grass court, settled in Kooyong from 1972 to 1988, before its final switch to Melbourne Park in 1988, which also brought a switch to hard courts to reduce damage to the surfaces from the intense heat and to reduce the risk of player injury. Even the hard court providers have changed to keep surface heat down. Measures have also been put in place to mitigate for the hottest days. In 1998, the Australian Open was the first tournament to introduce an extreme heat policy and has now developed its own heat stress scale. A combination of environmental factors, including radiant heat, humidity, air temperature and wind speed, are monitored at five positions around the Australian Open precinct before the scale is calculated. As the scale increases, progressive steps are taken to control heat stress. At three, players are actively cooled using ice vests and ice baths. At four, extended breaks between sets are introduced. And at five, play is suspended. But despite the event's long history of managing the impact of climate change and the installation of undercover, air-conditioned courts, the challenges presented in the modern day are leading some to question whether it's sustainable for the tournament to continue in its current form. In 2020, tournament organisers faced a new problem, bushfires, on top of the usual heat challenges. The impacts of smoke on human health are well documented and only intensify when playing a sport with the amount of airway exposure to pollutants increased. As well as negatively impacting performance, it can lead to long-term health effects, including decreased lung function. Slovenian player Dalila Jakopovic suffered a coughing fit due to the haze from the wildfires during qualifying. Understandably, she was left questioning the decision to play in such conditions. I was really scared that I would collapse, she said. I don't have asthma and never had breathing problems. I just couldn't breathe anymore and I just fell on the floor. It's not healthy for us. I was surprised, I thought we would not be playing today, but we don't have much choice. While bushfires may not always be a factor at the event, temperatures are projected only to get worse. If no significant climate action is taken, it's estimated that in 40 to 60 years, playing conditions in January are set to become unplayable. Average maximum temperatures are expected to increase significantly, as are the number of days at 35 degrees Celsius or above. So what can the tournament do? Well, the obvious answer is to move to a new date. 
this would not be a popular decision from an economic, logistical and cultural perspective, given the benefits of holding the event at the height of the summer, but it may be necessary. Another suggestion mooted has been to extend the length of the tournament and not schedule matches in the hottest parts of the day. Both moves would cause potential challenges for the tennis calendar, which is already heavily congested. But there may be no other way for the Australian Open to survive.